Do you remember the night that I tried to make cheese curds and I set your mom's stove on fire? Sure do. <laughs> sure Pretty sure do. that was a D&D night. Yep, that was a D&D night. Yep, I did a lot of... Not good stuff. That's okay. It was an accident. <laughs> she was pretty mad, though. Wait, this is an adults-only episode. She was fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, she was. She did the whole mom thing, though, where she was like, nobody was hurt. It's okay. And then she got mad. <laughs> she was quietly mad. She was mad inside. Yeah. But that was like a legit grease fire. That was dangerous. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It's cool. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally it's fine. fine. Do you remember the time that... You were DMing us, and we had to go to that elf party in an, yes. elf, in an elf only kingdom. And for some reason, the king liked to have slaves, but they were just like. It was a giant orgy party. Like, they were sex slaves. Like Yeah, the- it's kind of <laughs> messed up. Trigger warning. Yeah, this the king and his royal court were into voyeurism. And that was the point of the oh, kingdom. Yeah. And so there were all these different rooms. And if you wanted, you could either partake in watching or you partook in the action. But there was not just like standing there and not watching or standing. Like not, there was neither between. Like people would think you're fucking weird if you were just like a wallflower keeping your gaze up or something like that. So And we had to infiltrate. Like that was the whole point. Like we had to infiltrate to save this kingdom and take down the king because he was insane and all he ever wanted to do was have these giant orgy sex parties. Correct. Like, their kingdom was crumbling. Yes. The infrastructure was crumbling. <laughs> yes. It was It was really bad. And do you want to tell them what, what became of it? <laughs> so, while everybody else is voyeuring or whatever, <laughs> this is why this episode is rated Adult. R for adults. I don't know. For risque. Ma- yeah! <laughs> R for risque. Um... Soren, my character, decided that he was just going straight to the king. And he seduced the king, got the king into his bedroom, almost had to have sex with the king, but then beheaded him at the last second. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what Soren does. But it's, it's, it's his calling card. It is. <laughs> so then, by the laws of the kingdom, whoever defeats the previous king in battle becomes the king. Correct. So, unwittingly, unintentionally, because as a player, I didn't even know this until afterward, Mm -hmm. Soren became the king of that entire kingdom, right then, right there. It was great. And so, you know, he he had the crown. Like, he's, to this day, still (laughs) technically the the king king (laughs) of that kingdom. They don't even live anywhere near that kingdom anymore. But he did put the princess in charge of the kingdom. Correct. Like, she's the steward or whatever. Because yes. that's, that was kind of the point, was to get a proper royal leader into into power. Mm-hmm. Somebody who actually cared about the people. And, and that not was just, the princess. Yeah, yeah, and that was the princess. Did, she did. So, in my mind, mind you, this was one that I wrote. This was my pre-written, or my, my written, sorry, my homebrew. So, you know what she's into. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wait, way to call me out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway. I mean, it it could have been a joke. Anyway, um, the... I didn't actually have, like, a, a set, like, idea of how they would do it. Basically, I was like, as long as the king is dead and the pr- and they leave the princess in charge, they've done this correctly. They've gotten, they've done this small mission, they've, you know, helped out a, a kingdom, they've gotten clout or whatever with anybody, you know, whatever. As long as this happens, I don't care. But I didn't, I should have suspected this, but I didn't think that somebody would keep the title and just make a princess in charge. <laughs> Um, in my head, I saw different ways, like, for them to get information. One of the characters almost got the information of whoever kills the king is the next leader. Somebody was really close and just didn't, just, like, stopped asking people and just joined in or something. I don't remember. It might have been Chad or Shy. I know they were sitting on a couch somewhere chatting with people. But somebody almost got it. And then it didn't happen. So then I was like, well, somebody's going to kill the king. I have to admit it. And then they're going to be like, no, we're going to frame or like make it seem like the princess did it or whatever. No, no. Soren just kept it. Soren's like, cool. (laughs) He's like, he didn't even want it. No, he didn't. He didn't want to be king, but he also didn't want to just abandon this kingdom to potentially another shitty leader. Mm -hmm. So he was like, okay, princess, you're going to be in charge for now and we'll see how you do. And it's been like 20 years or so, yeah. And the kingdom's fine. It's not great, but it's definitely not where they were. 
he could abdicate, but he also isn't sure if he has to die in yeah. order to abdicate it, so he doesn't really want to go back and find out. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, in hindsight, thinking about it, it's probably the best move you could have made, because making the princess seem like she was the leader, like she was actually queen now, would make her a target. Right. Yeah, people aren't going to take her out because it doesn't matter if you take her out or not. Nobody's going to rule the kingdom because the king is still out there. So mm, good, good point. Yeah, so Soren actually, un- unwittingly, did the right thing. Hey, <laughs> That's kind of also his calling card. That is really his calling card. Unintentionally doing the, the right. thing that helps the quest. <laughs> For real. 